Two faces. I recently went on a tour of the Internet Archive, a nonprofit that records the form and shape of the Internet and all of its transient events. <coughs> the Archive is housed in the Richmond District of San Francisco and stores a copy of the Internet as it looks today, every day. In our tour, we witnessed the cutting edge, a perpetual evolution of hardware. The building granted was classical, a former church, Roman columns supporting a sloping roof, a solid white slab of building. The inside, however, was sleek, if not a little cluttered. Electronics everywhere, engineering projects proudly displayed. And the crown and jewel, 20 petabytes of data stored in megalith hard drives, black masses with twinkling blue lights. Our guide said, every time someone does something on a website, down downloads or uploads a file, the light goes off. The drive stood tall, giving off a constant hum and heat. He said, we're not perfect. Sometimes bits of the internet slip past before we have time to record them, but our systems are getting better and better. There are two faces to the idea of progress. The first face is mechanical and infinitely optimistic. We build things, and the things we build get better and bigger and shinier over time. Light becomes a roadblock in the study of the microscopic, so we develop ways to see with electrons. Larry and Sergey want to be like Iron Man, so they come out with Google Glass. The Internet Archive archives the Internet. They carry out their purpose with an anthropological and historical instinct, not just a technological urge. Human progress continues. We understand ourselves better, become more sane, and we talk endlessly. Questions and answers flow freely. We don't doubt that technology means change, and we most often imagine this change as progress. Fear of technology means a fundamental fear of change. After the tour, I sat on a bus. It was crowded and hot, and everyone there was a little miserable. A man with a round face, square glasses, and a floppy gray hat got on. He climbed on and screamed, almost unintelligibly, Subway shuttle! Subway shuttle! Everyone noticed. The sound was deafening in all corners of the bus. Then, a brief quiet, and he again slurred out words, almost inquisitively. Wrong lasting. Long master. On lasting? The bus was silent. The driver closed the doors and pulled the bus back onto the road. Then, in a desperate tone, Subway shuttle! Subway shuttle! There was a strange solidarity on that bus. His shouts were roaring, ringing the ears of those close to him. But we all averted our eyes, kept our mouths shut. We were quiet, incapable. What were we supposed to do? This is the second response to the idea of progress. A deafening and continuing silence. We were all frozen in this confrontation with mental illness. The man was loud and disturbing. Children woke from their sleep, a smile disappeared. But who could confront him? Who could calmly ask him what he wanted or needed without getting shouts in their faces? Who did not fear him, at least a little? And who was not ashamed of their silence, their unwillingness to talk? He shouted again and again. He shouted as he got off the bus 20 minutes later. The continued silence. <laughs>